In 1879, a woman was born in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. She was born Grace Kingsbury, and although she didn't know it, her legacy has lasted for over a hundred years. In her day, America was facing large upheavals with the rapid growth of industry and the expansion of the cities. In reaction to this upheaval, the progressive movement began. Their primary goal was the improvement of living standards for all, and these concerns led to the abolishment of child labor and improvement of rural farms and farming. However, the movement was divided on how to enact changes, with opinions running the gamut from picketing to more passive education through articles and books. Leaders like Alice Paul and Susan B. Anthony aggressively protested, while journalists like Ida Tarbell and Upton Sinclair used the written word to educate the public. Although not as well known as these people, one woman would contribute to this goal of improving lives in her city through her unwavering dedication to broader education opportunities. This unwavering strength, along with her pivotal role in building the school, earned her the name of the Mother of Wrights High School. However, her achievements were even more impressive considering the time she lived in. Women in that time were expected to be seen but not heard. Grace Warner was important in her own little way, in her own town, not by knocking down walls and saying, I am here, listen to me, but by knocking on the door every day and asking to be let in. And eventually, this led in part to the enrichment of Evansville's youth and the continuing education of Evansville's West Side. However, to understand how this came about, we must start at the beginning. From when she first arrived in Evansville, she was well-connected and keen to help out, but with much on her plate. From beginning and helping to run a World War I bond drive, building a Republicans women's club, helping found a school, becoming a mother's club president for two schools, and also being a wife and mother of four children, she was a very busy woman. On October 2nd, 1913, Grace was elected president of the Centennial Mothers Club. Later that year, she then called upon the women in the club to advocate for a West Side School. The idea of a West Side High School was not new, though, as the Courier ran an article on June 8, 1913, titled West Side High School Next. Grace, however, was determined to make the idea a reality. When the school board told parents that they would get a school if they wanted one, Grace helped circulate a petition that accumulated enough signatures to start the ball rolling. However, this plan would be delayed for three years, first by the president of the school board, A.C. Rosencrantz, falling ill and the decision being deferred for a later date, then by the bleachers at a school children's field jay, collapsing, which injured many and turned the board's attention to building a concrete and steel stadium, known as Bossy Field, which is still used today. However, during this time, Grace and her group did not stop agitating for the school and continued to show up at the meetings. After the stadium was completed, the building of what would become Wrights High School could begin. The first option was Laurel Hill, which is at the end of Franklin Street and where Teacouple Elementary is. The second proposed site was Forest Hill, which at that time was a common site of tent revivals and picnics due to its nearly unparalleled view. It was eventually decided that Forest Hill would be the build site. To allay the people who argued that the school would be isolated and inaccessible to the west side, it was announced that Limkey Avenue would be extended from Franklin Street and Dryer Boulevard would be extended, while Austin, Hartmitz, and Marion Avenues would connect the fledgling school to Barker Avenue and the streetcar line. This was significant, as Forest Hill was not heavily populated at that time. At that time, it was mostly undeveloped land, and many hardships were felt in clearing it and building the school. However, it is very hard to see that today, as it is nearly in the middle of Evansville's downtown. Construction and excavation was contracted out to M.J. Hoffman, and the building was designed by Clifford Shotbell. Owing to the fact that Forest Hill was heavily wooded, trees had to be cut down and their roots removed. However, instead of using machines and power tools, the workers used mules and brute strength to remove them. The cornerstone of the school was laid on November 3, 1917, by members of the Mother's Club of Centennial High School and presided over by members of the school board. This new school would have 260 students enrolled when it first opened, with most of them being from the west side. The namesake of the school was as important to the building as Grace was. While Ms. Warner was integral to spreading the word and advocating for the school, Wright spot 60% of the bonds necessary to fund it. Since the municipal bonds required to build the school had a lower return rate than war bonds, most people bought war bonds at the time. 
This was not the final iteration of the school, as many expansions were completed over the years, with the culmination being that the original school is the nucleus of the complex today that educates 1,335 children. The school today far outstretches the original building, and Grace would be humbled that a school she helped build has now served the children at Evansville's west side for over a hundred years.